Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So last week I made a video about clerics, right? And I kind of go over a example or a, how you could build a character if you're new. But I wanted to give you like a concrete example that wasn't based on kind of my prior work. Because I did a Tempest one and I'd already made a video about Strahd Mouse. So there was some sort of context there. Or if you hadn't watched that video, you could just click on the DD and kind of get more information. But I wanted to do one from scratch. So... I'm just going to pick one from the player's handbook. I'm going to pick light. I've played light clerics in two one shots, but obviously for a one shot, you usually don't develop the character much. But um, I wanted to kind of go through the process, right? So I pick light cleric because I wanted to do kind of a blasty cleric. I think the um, disadvantage as a reaction thing is kind of a fun mechanic. I think that's pretty cool. I was like, okay, well, let's give it a go. So I was like, all right, well, First, let's look at deities, right? So I went to fire deities, and one I found that I thought was pretty cool was Kazuth, who is a primordial deity. Uh, is known as the Fire Lord, the Lord of Flames, Tyrant King, uh, Tyrant Amongst Fire. So I went down to the worshippers kind of section to kind of read about that. And the section that I thought was kind of interesting was Disciples of the Phoenix, which is the good branch of the tree, because, you know, fire, uh, primordial force, can be both evil and it can be both good. Right, but the interesting thing is there's an evil branch of it called the Salamander branch, and they see fires renewing aspects of the deity, so they think they should, you know, destroy the world to renew it, make it new, very apocalyptic kind of view, while the other one's more about how fire purifies. We have a duality, which you will notice from my last video, is I really like when a god has, you know, a neutral kind of thing going. I really like it when there's a duality, when there's multiple different iterations or understandings of the same kind of core beliefs, because I think that's very true to the real world as many people um, take different holy texts and different ways and kind of draw different conclusions from them. Uh, you can imagine the same thing occurring in our fantasy world. And then the last one is the purifying flame, the neutral one, where it's about striking a balance between purification and destruction. So my character idea, right, is kind of go on the idea of the phoenix, right, phoenix being rebirth, the idea of, uh, you know, the fire purifying, also, you know, destruction leading to renewal. So those are kind of the, the themes, right, a fresh start and the purifying flames. So I was thinking, let's do a background of a criminal. Let's just do like a career criminal who maybe had a uh, big gig, big payout where they got betrayed. All right, maybe they um, completed the big heist or maybe the big assassination, whatever you want the big job to be. And they're on their way out. And maybe the people who hired them kill, like lock them aside of the, the shed where they're there, you know, the hideaway shed or whatever, where they were going to meet to get paid. They burn it down, killing his entire crew. You could backstory that like, you know, maybe his uh, relative or maybe their close friend, maybe they grew up together with that person. Someone really important to them was with them that day. Everyone dies, is gold in flames, they're knocked unconscious, um, and they wake up and they're like in a, a church of some sort, a monastery, and they have all these uh, perfect scars and burns all over themselves from, from you know, the thing. But uh, oddly enough, the scars and the, the burns kind of make out text, right? And I was thinking kind of something along the lines of a bright wizard, because uh, bright wizards, bright wizards are from the Warhammer universe. And they are, one of their defining features is they have like fire for hair and they have these like writings all over them. And I think that kind of aesthetic is super cool. You also think of Hawkeye from Full Metal Alchemist with her uh, back tattoo. And you can kind of do something like that. And I think it could be interesting where maybe like you wake up and uh, you, know, you, you have these scars or whatever all over you, but then you notice that the scars are like actually words and text and then you have this intricate symbol burned into you. And maybe one of the uh, orders of the DAT kind of discovered you and the burning wreckage and, you know, rescued you and uh, nursed you back to health. And uh, when they take the bandages off of you, uh, maybe, you know, that you were horrifically burned at the time when they rescued you. But when they take the bandages off, it reveals the, the writing and your skin's fine. That could be like a really cool introduction. You could have a, a physical feature that, you know, defines your character gives you kind of a standout thing, but you don't have to be like a devout person. Like maybe you don't care about this deity. You've never heard of this deity before. It makes sense as this is a rather um, minor deity, right? It's it's not like a, one of the big ones. It probably isn't super celebrated. 
and you can kind of go that route with it and you can kind of become maybe like a reluctant hero kind of situation where you don't really pray to the deity right you don't really think anything of it but there are members of these churches the or cults depending on you know your perspective that are after you it could be a plot point if your dm is already doing something very elemental focused they you could have you know that cult or whatever basically just be one of the elemental bad guys you were going to do anyways if fire was going to be one of your bad guys in your elemental campaign or if you're doing a very um improvisational kind of style game giving your dm plot points and kind of like you know bad guys and good guys that you can have show up if you know the dm needs a uh, reason why you're in a uh maybe an undead city a city that's been taken over by the undead maybe the people are like really ravaged maybe a few of them are believers and uh kazuth and they're like okay well uh they see you with the, the writings and they like bring you in even though it's a, it would be a very hostile place and gives the party an option for a uh, safe rest or if they just need a generic bad guy instead of doing bandits like maybe just bandits on the road right which is a very typical trope all they would have to do is change that slightly and then uh, the bandits happen to be members of that cult and then it kind of ties into the backstory it could be a very easy thing for them to implement into their game already and it would kind of be very easy to make it seem like the dm you know is this mastermind but really they're just tying in a little element of your backstory repetitively and it could be really easy to do for them it could make you feel engaged and you can have a pretty deep character rather quickly and you know all i did was i went okay cool i want to play light um because i thought the reaction ability was kind of fun okay well let's look at fire deities um oh this one has cool artwork let's uh scroll down to the worshiper section oh okay this is kind of what they believe in there's a few, quite a few different orders, so you know I can read about ones, and I don't really have to pick one, uh, but I, you know, I can just kind of steal bits of their stuff. And okay, well, how do I tie their beliefs into maybe a more of a larger character? Okay, yeah, re renewal, purifying. We'll do a you know a character that has a fresh start. You know, instead of giving up their criminal ways um, because of what happened, maybe their maybe their uh, bond is getting revenge on the. The criminal organization that screwed them over and killed their their friends again gives the dm a fantastic plot point or something to use in the future again you should be building your characters with your dm and other party members so that it works and it's in line uh very easily like if you have a party member that's maybe very lawful uh maybe a paladin or maybe uh maybe someone that's past is like a, a guard or something like that maybe your fighter is like a past soldier or a past guard or something you can tie that in where they kind of you know found you and helped you and like knew about your past but like saw that you were trying to turn a new leaf you can have that bond with another party member that way very easily and then when you're picking your spells and things just you know try to keep a bit of a fire theme going very easily you could change that you could do little things like when you heal somebody instead of it just being like light that comes out and heals them maybe it's like a burning like fire burst first and cauterizes the wounds um and you could do that for your healing spells instead mm -hmm. you know just to give you some more thematic theme to it and remember a um a cleric doesn't have to be like the super devout uh holy person like in other editions if you lost your god's favor or whatever you lost your abilities that isn't a thing in fifth edition in fact you don't even really need to worship a god in general i just think that picking a deity to kind of base your character around makes it takes a lot of the writing off of you right like yeah if you're a um english person or a writer and a fantastic storyteller then go ahead make something cool make something new right but some of us aren't um as gifted or as creative as you are right so we need something to kind of get us going and i think also uh the best things are made when you have restrictions right so when you pick something that and you try to work within a, a system it's very easy for you to to make a character and you don't have to just use this for clerics right if you want to do a druid and you want to use a similar uh similar way of going about it that's fine you could be a paladin you could be a fighter you know you, it doesn't really matter what uh class you're playing to kind of use this this framework but obviously i think uh clerics worth the best for it simply because of the way clerics get their powers is from a kind of a deity typically that uh, this kind of mindset i think really works well for them but it, it's not you know required you don't have to be a cleric to to do this so if you want to steal this for any other class Feel free. In fact, I think it would work really well for like a warlock too, because warlocks get their powers from a deity. And um, you could just, you know, just which type of deities you might look for might be just slightly different, right? But 
domains were a really big part of Pathfinder and third edition. And that kind of defines what each deity does and what powers they give you. And you can use those old systems that kind of inform your character's choices, right? Even though that domains aren't as big of a part of fifth edition, right? Like mechanically, yes, like domain is still a thing. But like back in the old day, if you wanted to play a light domain cleric, for example, you would have to go onto the D and D uh, wiki, or if you, you know, back in the day, you would have a book, right? You would use the, the the book. They would have a whole section on gods, and you would go to the god section, and you would find someone that in their pantheon mentions light or fire, and if they don't, you you literally couldn't use them. Like you couldn't use that deity, at, with that character. Like literally on Kazuth's section. And thir- the third edition one will have a list of things that you can use for them, which is fire, destruction, renewal, suffering, and wrath. And I like to use the third edition ones opposed to the fifth edition ones, because if you look at the fifth edition section, it'll just say like light or fire, right? So third edition has more. And I think, you know, the more options there are, the kind of more information you can get. And I'm getting most of my uh, information when I do these kind of things from just like the fan wiki, the fandom wiki. And is it perfectly accurate? No, but like, does it matter? It's fantasy, it's fiction anyways. Is some of it's uh, some stuff that maybe someone played with in a game and they wanted to add their like own character's lore or something or something from their unique campaign. At the end of the day, it's still inspiration you can draw from. So I don't, I wouldn't worry about official sources and all that jazz because it's, you know, it's Dungeons and Dragons. As soon as you play your first game, it's no longer, you know, your experience is an official, an official adventure, but it's still your experience, right? And making the world your own is a big part of the game. I think I got my point across. You can kind of see how very quickly I took an idea. I just picked something in the book. I very quickly just read some stuff. I created a background based on it. I created kind of a little bit of a narrative on it. I, you know, would be doing this with my DM and stuff to see if they can tie it into the world, see if it meets the kind of the themes that they're going for in their adventure. And then very quickly, I had a, a functional character that had a theme, a way to kind of flavor spells that may make them kind of unique and interesting because. At the end of the day, like everyone uses the same few spells and it gets kind of boring. You probably talk to your DM. They might even be letting, willing to let you have access to maybe like Firebolt. Of course, Purifying Flame is on the Cleric spell list already. But, you know, if maybe they're willing to add some good narrative spells to your list just to make it a bit more fun, they might be willing to do that. If you enjoy this style of video, I think I might make one or two more of these just to, um, you know, just explore some different character concepts, give some people some ideas. Maybe they might uh, really like them and try using them. But if you have a character idea or if you follow this methodology and kind of come up with something, share it in the comment below. I would love to see uh, what other people are coming up with. I would love to see if this you know system works for other people. This is how I made my first character, I'm pretty sure, in Pathfinder using a very similar methodology. And it's been a great success for me every single time. I always kind of pick something to base my character off of or to inform my character's decision based on um, from something in a pre-existing book or written somewhere in uh, either you know, Feyrun or any of the various settings. And it, I think it makes, you know, it really streams like the process of character creation. It gives my DM a place they can go to, like a, they can go look up the deity and steal things from it to make plot points for me as well. So they have a source other than myself to kind of get information that they could tie in. So they can, you know, surprise me, which is always fantastic. It's always great when your DM has that option. If you're done sharing your opinion in the comments below, don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll help me out a bunch. Thank you for watching.